What's up guys, Garrett here from Gun Gamers to talk about Jewel Creep. Now, this is a topic that I'm sure has been covered by plenty of other people. In fact, when I was doing some background research on this, I found tons of different threads on forums and YouTube videos explaining what Jewel Creep is. But I still think it's important that if you haven't seen it and you do watch our channel, that you should understand what's going on. So, without further ado, we'll dive right into it. So, what is Jewel Creep? Jewel Creep is the phenomenon that results in airsoft guns whenever you load a higher weight BB, don't change anything else internally to your gun, but your energy at the muzzle is going to increase simply by increasing the weight of that BB. Now, there's a couple of different reasons and they're all caused by different properties of the gun. For example, in gas guns, there's a floating valve inside the nozzle that is affected by the timing of how long the BB is in the barrel. More inertia in the BB, thus higher weight in the BB, the longer that valve is gonna stay open, so the more gas pressure is going to be affected by that BB. So that's how you get an increase. The other thing is if in an AEG, you have an overvolume situation. For, this is commonly held in short barrels, but the volume of the barrel versus the volume that you have contained inside the cylinder of your mech box, if they're vastly different, uh, in the case of you have more volume in your cylinder than you do in your barrel, when you put a heavier weight BB inside your magazines to fire through the gun, all that air pressure is going to be able to affect that because you have an excess. If you match that volume, you can generally avoid this, at least from what I've seen. This is why you see AEGs now, like your 10.5 Mark 18s or your 14.5 M4s. This is why the different type cylinder exists. So a type zero doesn't have any hole cut out to bleed extra air pressure off. And a type one and a type two have that little slot cut into the side of it closer or further away from the cylinder head. By matching that volume, you can avoid an instance where jewel creep can affect what velocity and how much energy your gun is shooting at. So to demonstrate this phenomenon for you guys, I took my WeTech MSK and X-Cortec X3300W uh, suppressor, pec box, chrono, tracer unit, combo, and I took a bunch of different readings. Now, I didn't, this isn't a stock gun. I have an RA Tech N Pass in it, and it has already been preset for one particular field that I use it at. But that is not necessarily as important. What is important is I didn't change anything about the gun between the different testings. I used four different BBs. I used a G&G .20 standard BB. I used an Elite Force .25 standard BB. I used Elite Force .28 biodegradable BBs. And then I actually had a small bag of Matrix .40 gram sniper BBs. I didn't change anything about the gun between the tests. All I did was change the magazine. Now, I used Nuprol Green Gas, or the Nuprol 2.0 Green Can uh, Gas for this test. I filled up each of the mags with BBs, filled them full of gas until I stopped hearing the hissing noise, and then I let the mags sit in my apartment for one hour before I did testing. So, without further ado, I'm gonna fast forward through all this because it takes a long time to shoot, but I filled all the mags up, so I get about 25 to 30 rounds of readings. Now, with this, I eliminate the first five readings that I get. This is because the first couple of rounds on a gas blowback rifle, the magazine is at room temperature. After those couple of rounds, the temperature kind of slowly peters off until you get towards the end of the magazine and you start really losing gas and the temperature starts affecting the pressure. In order to help eliminate this, I also took five seconds between each shot in order to allow the mag to come to a stable temperature between shots. So, 
Here's all the testing. I'm gonna fast forward it through super quick, but you can kind of see where all the readings fly by for the different weight BBs. So, after all that testing, after I eliminated the first five shots, tabulated all the data, and crunched the numbers, this is the chart that I get. You can see I have it organized by BB weight, or 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0.28, and 4.0. The first line here is the average velocity of those readings. Then this next line is the standard deviation. That's the plus minus range that the velocity incurred. And as you can see here, with values of 6 to almost 9 feet per second plus minus, you could tell I was using a gas gun. If you repeated this in your own testing, you might find that that number is somewhat closer to 1, 2, maybe even 3 or 4 feet per second. This next line, I calculated joules of energy using the kinematic formula 1 half mass times velocity squared. And then lastly, I have the percent difference. Uh, in energy from one BB to the next. So let's start off with the 0.20 gram. The 20 gram, my rifle was chronoing with 359.5 feet per second, which resulted in a 1.200 joules. Now, for most fields, that's perfectly okay. In fact, most fields around the United States are 400 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB. Moving over to the 2.5, you can see I have a lower velocity, 321.5 feet per second, but I have the same energy level. Not sure why that was the case, but I have a feeling it's because the inertia change isn't as great with the 0.05 gram difference compared to a 2.0. As you can see when I did the math, I had 1.200 joules. Now there were a bunch of numbers on the back end of that, 10 different decimals. Those did differ between the two, but that's negligible as far as this is concerned. So we have a 0% difference from 0.20 to 0.25, at least in this test. Next up we have the 2.8. Again the velocity decreased 317.8 feet per second. Our standard deviation did increase to 8.4, but you can also see our energy level increased from 1.2 to 1.313. That's a plus 9.4% change in energy. Moving on to the 4.0 the four gram BB, or the 0 0.40 gram BB. You can see velocity again decreased, as you would expect with a heavier BB. Now we're at 292 feet per second. Standard deviation is high, but it's similar to the 0.28 gram BB, 8.9 versus 8.4. But you can see now here, the energy level has much is much higher compared to our 0.20 and 0.25 gram BB tests. Got 1.584 joules, which is a plus 20.6% increase over the 0.28 gram BB, and a plus 32% increase over the 0 0.20 and the 0.25. That's quite the difference if you think about it. Now, I ran these numbers again and did it with a sniper rifle. If you have a sniper rifle at 500 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB, that has 2.32 joules. 
when you step it up to a 0.28 gram BB, that's 2.54 joules, 0.2 joule difference. When you step it up again to 0.40 grams, you top out at 3.07 joules, which is a 0.75 joule increase. Almost a full joule in terms of energy. It's three quarters of a joule. You're almost there. Now, you could tune your gun to be even hotter than that, and I know some places allow 500 feet per second with a 0.25 or 400 feet per second with a 0.25 as far as rifles are concerned, but you can see how the energy level is slowly increasing in sort of an arc method or an arc relationship. If you put all the data kind of on a graph where you have your BB weight increasing and your energy level on the other side of the bar graph, you would see the energy start to do something like that. It's gonna start increasing at a much faster level. So as players, we can see this and we can understand how sometimes when we get hit with a BB, it may feel like it has more impact even though they pass, even though the person that shot it at you passed the chrono. If they're using a heavier weight BB, they may be having a higher muzzle energy without even realizing it. What can you do to help prevent this and to help fit within the rules? Well, fields are already trying to do it. When you go to an American Milsim event or Milsim West or any of these type of, of like large scale Milsim events, they're gonna chrono in joules and they'll tell you flat out 1.5 joules or 1.6 or what have you. And when you go to Chrono, you have to test with their BBs, their chronographs, their staff members in order to pass. A lot of times those test BBs that they give you are gonna be 0.3s. Now 0.3s are, going to, are a pretty good middle ground between the average rifleman, because most riflemen are not gonna use a 0.4 BB. Because as you can see here, at 1.2 joules down here, and one point, almost 1.6 up here, your velocity is less than 300 feet per second. That means it's gonna be slow reaching out to hit the target. You wanna be kinda of hovering around in here where you've got some good velocity on there but that your energy level is maintained. That way you can fly further and you're less affected by wind and things like that. Generally the point four is reserved for snipers and their sniper rifles that are capable of higher velocities, at least higher starting velocities, so that they ha are above the 300 threshold with their heavier weight BBs. So, fields are already chronoing in joules with 0.3 gram BBs. That's awesome. And that helps to prevent jewel creep from HPA, gas guns, AEGs, what have you. What else can you do? If you are a field, it's really handy to have a joule chart, or at least a velocity chart. You pick out what your velocity level has to be. There's a lot, a couple different websites that already have stuff like that totally made up. So it'll have your BB weights on one side, what the velocity is, or what the different uh, velocity and joule energy levels are going to be. And you can extrapolate all that information to show, okay, you're above the limit, below the limit of where you need to be compared to a 400 feet per second, 0.20 gram BB. That's also helpful, but you're relying on your players to tell you, hey, I'm using a XY BB weight. So when you chrono, they may tell you, oh, I'm using 0.28s and in reality they're using 0.30s or 32s or even higher you could get that's that's blatant cheating you're cheating the chronograph by taking advantage of this type of phenomenon the last thing you could probably do as a field owner is concerned you could limit what bb weight people use i don't really like that option because i found with certain guns 
For example, I used to have a WeTech G39K, and that hop-up unit, the stock hop-up unit that was in that, would only feed well with 0.30s. And it's not just feeding as well. I was over hopping with 0.28s. As soon as I put 0.30s in there, I started getting nice flat trajectories with the within the limits of what the hop up unit could adjust. So if you go, if I go play with that indoors, well, they might restrict me to a 0.25 gram BB or a 0.20, something like that. My hop up's going to do really wacky things. It's going to be going like this all the time. I'm barely going to be able to reach people. Now granted, CQB, how much reach do you really need? But, you know, if you're over hopping at 100 feet, well, some CQB fields are greater than that. And if you want to be able to hit somebody all the way across from one corner to the next, that's going to affect that. Also, throughout that arc, you might have to compensate for the different distances. You may have to aim under people. That's a bad thing, and you don't want to be dealing with that. So, what could you as a player do to help prevent any type of issues? Well, I would take your field limits, calculate that into joules, and then use the, a 0.3 BB or heavier in your own testing to adjust your velocity to where their joule limit is. Now, you may not use 0.30s, you may use 0.25s, and that's totally okay, but I would check your velocity with a 0.30, see what your energy level is, dial it to where it's within that field spec, so that way when you run a 0.25, you're actually gonna have less energy. So you're definitely gonna be okay and within the limits. Now HPA guns, you can oftentimes adjust the regulator on the fly to be able to get the correct energy value, and that's totally okay as well. Just remember to use a tournament lock so that way you don't accidentally increase that or purposefully increase that in order to gain an advantage as far as energy is concerned. So guys, that's all I got for explaining on Jewel Creep. I hope this data and information kind of helped you understand what goes on when fields chrono and joules instead of velocity and what you as a player can do to help alleviate safety concerns on the field. I hope you learned something from me today. I wasn't trying to preach about any particular thing. All I was doing is just explaining how the phenomenon happens. I'm Garrett from Gun Gamers, and I'll see you next time.